is a new map. Let's we'll head on over to Entombed Valley for the second game of this best of three series. In the top left corner, we have from Team Empire, Vines, the yellow Protoss that has honestly really tried to prove himself again, but hasn't really had the too many platforms other than online cups. Vines plays in a lot of things like the Playhem dailies or the Zotac cups. But now he really wants to get that spot for NCL Season 4, and he's so close. This is the semifinal, single elimination, best of three, win or go home. And Vines will be trying and testing his luck if he can uh, take the 2-0 win that he needs right now against sort of. Spawning over here in the bottom left-hand corner as the blue Zerg. And sort of has really impressed me, impressed me, honestly. You know, you were saying that a lot of his countrymen overshadow him, and it's such a shame because sort of is the type of player that I think really needs, doesn't need, but he deserves the attention. He's been playing fantastic. I <laughs> you're really about to feel say he needs the attention. He needs <laughs> the attention. No, I sort of is uh, one of these guys that's gonna. He's getting more and more recognition. We're not. We're not the ones who first said that he needs to get shown. In fact, there are a lot of people in chat when NSQ was first starting saying, "Show sort of games," and for good reason too. He got second in the WCS Sweden mm -hmm. Nationals just recently, losing to Thorzen. Um and that's that is nothing to be ashamed of when you oh, lose to Thorzen, one of the best foreign Terrans. And sort of is just doing it through very solid play. You can't say that he's relying on gimmicks and once players figure him out, you know, he's, he's done. No, he's, he's doing the exact same things as other really strong European Zergs that play standard macro does as well, like Stefano and Nurtio. You're absolutely right. So what can, what can you criticize this guy on? <laughs> he's like, I mean, well, uh, well, you know, he's playing a solid style that everyone's playing. It's like, he's going to fade in obscurity. He's like, well, actually, no, he's just good. Yeah, it's... It's actually really tough to classify these types of players because you're just all around standard. And it stinks because to get recognition for being a standard player, you need to be winning everything, yeah. like Stefano. You know, yeah, like but MVP. even Stefano, he's been known to all in here and there. Sort of, I haven't seen a single game where he actually all in. And that's something that's very powerful in and of itself because sort mm -hmm. of uh, for him to get that much recognition and not have any glaring, like, uniqueness to him, that means he has to be a very good player. It's funny, too, because it just seems that sort of is holding the all-ins more than really initiating the all-ins just because he scouts his opponent. We saw him go up against Era. We saw him just hold off Empire Vines' two base rush. So, uh, and, and it all comes down to how the, the small things that sort of is getting information. He's buying time, grabbing positions hot spots around the map, if you will, that sort of really lays out and is able to control effectively. And we'll see whether or not Vines has it in him to go that extra distance. You know, a lot of Protoss players at this level needs more than just good builds. It needs more than just good micro. You need strong mind games. Why do you think players like MC perform so well, Andre? Because he's able to cycle in so many good psychological games, especially against Zerg, and that's why so many Zergs feared playing against MC for a long time. I don't even think MC beats people with build orders or anything. It's just strictly his mind. Like, he doesn't yeah. out-build order his opponent. He doesn't... And he uh, makes up a lot of stuff on the fly, too. That's yeah. what's so cool. Like, in tournaments, he's like, yeah, like, the like back in Red Bull Battlegrounds, which is uh, another tournament that MC won recently, he, he was making up builds, like, in between games while he was playing Diablo 3. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> the, that kind of stuff is you, you, can't, you can't really make up, you know? You... It's like, hmm. Without having a brilliant R RTS mind. This kiting would be really, really good with stalkers instead yeah. of demon hunters. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where sometimes if you take a break, sometimes you think more creatively, creatively you know? Morgan, our producer, is a big proponent of that. Sometimes you just got to relax a little bit more. MC is a guy who does that too. He plays Teemo in League of Legends and then all of a sudden comes up with a new way to 7 game. <laughs> It's true, and he wins tournaments. You can't get mad at that yeah, either. You can. <laughs> you absolutely can. Yeah. The situation we have right now sort of has taken a very, very fast third base. Now, I say it's a very fast base uh, not because of the timing, but because of the map. In Tomb Valley, definitely not a great map for getting three bases this fast. The main reason for that is four gate pressure is ridiculously powerful on this map. But look at how Vines is going about this. He's getting a fast Nexus, a third Nexus more Ooh. so. Before the seven minute mark, we're seeing an inc increase in popularity. And I remember when we used to make a big deal out of like an eight to nine minute Nexus. And now Protosses are really pushing the envelope. 
And of course, it's because it's granted he has good information. Vines saw the hatchery, saw the drone transfer, saw even small things like uh, their lack of gas units or any kind of gas spending whatsoever. You saw an early queen move out to the third as well. Those are all indications that, that says, well, Sorter's being really passive. Look at yeah. it, 13 drones in production, Andre. So Vines has that availability, but it's just crazy to think, man, they can make these such greedy plays and no one's going to ever attack each other or kill each other. Yeah, that's so sick, man. <laughs> I mean, that that's how you know. I mean, they have these little tiny triggers that even, I think, casters can't really comprehend until they're actually playing a ton. And that's what's so cool about it. I mean, these players just know exactly what their opponents are doing based on these little tiny triggers. And you said it, like, just seeing the queen move like that tells them, okay, it is an early third base. It's a Stefano-esque style opening. I can be assured that Metabolic Boost will not be out before eight minutes. Let me go ahead and take my, my uh, third base like this. And that is something that I think is so cool in the world of StarCraft. Yeah, to be fair, it's also a map that really fosters that kind of fast third. It's in Tomb Valley. The, the the ramp to the third is easy protected just because of the access, ease of access once you take out the rocks. And that's why Vines would pick something like that. And that makes me think that Vines is just going to power up and go for that three base all-in push when you go for like the, 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 the huge Colossus death ball where you have some uh, mortal sprinkled in, but mainly Stalker Colossus and you hit pre-hive and you just have this overwhelming amount of units before they're really able to reap off that investment. And I mean, a lot of Protoss players are trying to, just trying to hit Zerg when they play a little bit too greedy. Yeah. And I wonder if uh, that's what Vines is going to do here. Yeah, I think that's one of the most powerful styles. Actually, me and Day9 were talking about this at WCS Canada. And we were saying that, yeah, a push like that hits approximately two to three minutes faster. Two to three minutes. That means you have two to three uh, minutes less to actually deal with the same army, which would be like three Colossus. And as you said, a ton of Stalkers. You're looking at 160 supply around there for the Protoss. That is scary. And it normally happens around 14 to 15 minutes. We're going to see right now, uh, I mean, of course, both these players are going to be a little bit slower to tech because they're all concentrating and getting that perfect economy up right now. So we really won't have any action until it's like four base against three base. That is absolutely sick <laughs> in any game. Uh, well, you do see a lot of tech being developed for sort of. He's getting his pathogen glands. Now, something that we've been kind of seeing a lot of Zerg's value is development of layer tech before going to Hive. Some Zerg try to rush it, and there was a huge wave of Zergs that were trying to rush Hive at like 11, 12 minutes. But then they realized, yeah, I have Hive, and I have these upgrades, but maybe I have like, like five investors. <laughs> I realized I may need a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'll, we'll see how sort of chooses to go from here. Of course, he knows his opponent is going for three bases and going for a quick six gas. But I think sort of realizes, well, okay, I had just two, three minutes where I can get up a significant amount of Lyrtec if I really want to. Um, and you can see at yeah, this response, he's not going to rush for a quick hive. Instead, he's going to take his gases, pump out a lot of units. And I like that kind of style that we see Zerg stabilizing around rather than just trying to say, I'm going to rush and hope that he doesn't attack in time. I mean, Frodan, as casters, how many times do we see, oh, he had a pre hive tithing? You're dead. <laughs> or pre greater spire, even. Um, it happens just so much. It's the same thing we see over and over. And I, I really urge all Zergs to develop your lair tech as much as possible because Infestors are the big counter, I think, to anything that Protoss has pre-Storm and pre, I would say, Mothership as well. So mothership helps quite substantially. But yeah. Infestors with Infested, yes. Terran <laughs> Infested Terrans, they're just so powerful. Infested Terrans are one of the highest DPS units in the game. Really utilize that, get that big Infestor count. And when your Hive pops out, all of a sudden you have the best synergy in the world. Well, you can you see that sort of is resorting to that 12 minute Hive and getting out some Infestors. But yeah, again, he's been keeping a low Infestor count. He only has four at the moment. A couple will pop out. And now Vines is starting to power up to a scary, scary Protoss oh, yeah. army. And this is the timing that we've all we've kind of been alluding to this entire game. This this one giant Colossus based push that Vines has. He has Blink done and plus three will finish. So it's uh this this is again pretty standard out of most PVZs. But it's supposed to be seen at 17 minutes this push. Not 13 and a half. That's so crazy. And you can even see the supply 153, just around what I was saying before, which was 160. Vines is just going to get additional Stalkers protecting his Colossus as much as possible. That's going to be the name of the game. 
Doesn't matter what happens to your stalkers, just kill those Colossus and make sure that they're able to DPS the mostly Zergling slash Infestor army. And that's what's going to be so powerful in this composition. We're going to see the first fight. Mm. And there's a ton of Corruptors. There is a lot of Corruptors, and uh, it is in Tomb Valley, an area where you can get pretty good flanks if you're oh. if you're Zerg, and as long as you can catch him in position, you can see the Investors really want to latch a Fungal down onto the Colossus, wow. and he gets it. The Vines immediately throw, uh, throwing down Emergency Force Fields, but he locks in a lot of the Investors, preventing the ability for them to escape. Now, a couple of uh, Fungals do drop the remainder of the sentries, but Vines has a very large intimidating stalker count and able to tra trap the remainder of the units. And that was well done thus far by Vines, but at the same time sort of catches a lot of important gas units. Yeah, the, the problem is sort of, what does he actually have behind this? I mean, he only has three Infestors living from this. <laughs> how many <laughs> How many Zerglings are what? in production, Andre? A hundred Zerglings. That's 50 larvae committed to just pure length. And there's a still a Colossus out, and Stalkers can blink back for a long time. And, and there's enough Stalkers to really prevent Zerglings from getting good surface area, especially based off the ramps. You can see oh now the gosh. Fungals do latch down, and the Morals are not really that useful for this battle. But maybe no need. The Colossus is completely destroying everything. Now the Stalkers are not really blinking back. Vines is getting locked down by these Fungals. Great job by Sword of thus far. And you can see that Empire Vines now reinforcing with Zelds, really realizing that he needs a way to deal with it. Ruins are done morphing, but they are out of position as well, and the Stalkers are not aware of it. And Vines is really starting to press uh, deeper in here, but I think the reinforcements are going to be just enough for Sword of to hold this off. It's going to be very difficult, but of course the Brutalers on the top over there, that's what's really helping out. Now the Zerglings are pushing through. And this is absolutely fantastic. I can't believe sort of is able to push all this back. And really, Vines has not been committing to anything else. This was all trying to overdevelop that big army. You know, this is not supposed to happen so early. So when you're trying to get that big army, what ends up happening is you don't have High Templar tech. You don't have uh, Archons out in the field. You just don't have the capacity of doing that because you're really investing all of your gas into this one single push. And now that Brutalers are out, yes, sort of lost his fourth base, but it's no big deal. And even though the Protoss is remaking, or not remaking, but taking a fourth base, his gas count in his army is just significantly smaller than his opponent's. I think sort of once he actually just established a little bit more meat to his army, he should just go push out, and there's no stopping sort of from taking out that fourth base. But landing those fungals as soon as those infestors pop was so key. One thing I, I don't know, I don't know if it was that intentional, but sort of had his infestors pop from the third and get the fungals down. And as a result, stalkers couldn't blink. Zerglings were very quick to chew through the stalker ball. And as a result, Vines lost a huge ability to kind of poke in and deny expansions from this point on. And sort of has does have Brutalers, and he does have a pretty decent Infestor count. Um, so he, he, I don't, I don't know, uh, I don't know what Vines can really do from here, and I don't know if Sword is going to continue to press on. Uh, it's a little bit hard to sense wh how far you can push into a Protoss army, but this is a great time for Sword. A little and bit of harass with this War Prism is actually doing a ton of damage. You can see the small little areas actually affecting sort of quite substantially, and he doesn't actually have any more room of supply. Well, there it is. A lot of Zerkins pop, but he's not going to actually defend this. Well, uh, he has to worry about this push that's coming towards the fourth base, Andre. Uh, Vines does have a much up on the way and two more Archons. Does he have enough time really to fend off against his army? The Infestors are keeping the armies fungled down by the mineral line, and that's getting able to catch some probes as well. And the Archons are not really that useful because they're completely sandwiched down and not able to really get to the Bruins whatsoever. Uh, and that, that fourth base is just under so much siege. GG immediately, and sort of takes the series 2-0. Beautiful. Beautiful. Stopping that push is something I don't think many people can do. Being able to actually constantly go ahead and inject all of your hatcheries to the point where you have 50, 50 larvae <laughs> just laying around while you're maxed. Well, he Nobody was really making like that. Zerglings and a few infestors, so he had more than 50 larvae. Oh my <laughs> god. That guy it is so absurd. sick. It was absurd. You know, the sort of sick. strong mechanics, great game sense. Uh, Vines had a really scary push, had an another opportunity, but great recovery from sort of. Good play from both ends, but in the end, sort of is the one who just played overall better. Great decision making, and in the end, secure his spot in the finals.